2015, an elite DFS Army Commando unit formed to bring high-level DFS strategy to the masses. Today, hated by DFS sharks and lineup sellers alike, they continue their quest to turn Joe into DFS Pro. Good afternoon, everybody. This is your DFS Army Bold Calls NBA DFS podcast for February 5th of 2019. And I am your host, as always, Boomer's Daddy, joining me from the stressed out, worried that they're giving up their whole team for Anthony Davis and not going to amount to anything. Bear. What's up, Shy? <laughs> What's up, man? Oh, man. I just got to give you a little bit of trolling on that one because, uh, Literally, if this trade after if okay, so if everything is included that was announced yesterday, literally your 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 team will be like Spy. It'll be um, Josh Jesus, Hart. Get the, get the name right. Sorry, V. Whatever. Uh, Zoo Box. Tyson Chandler, you're going to have to go sign Carmelo Anthony. I'm going to have to come off the bench and play point guard for a couple minutes. You're going to have to play, you know, shooting guard. So, like, I hope you got your basketball sneaks on. I just played last night. So, and I've got a, uh, I've got a well, set of uh, KDs sitting over here that I haven't got rid of um, just because they have my son's initials on them. So, yeah. Uh, well, the, I'm ready the thing to go. is... If I was if I shoot like I did last night, then I think the Lakers will at least give me a ten day. I, I mean, that's all they need, right? Ten days until buyout season starts. Mm-hmm. So yep. I mean, they can pay me, you know, forty thousand dollars, and I'll come out there and I'll run around and pass like Lonzo Ball. No, you won't, dude. I've got a mm-hmm. rocket arm, and I can see the court. I can't shoot worth the crap, but I can. So pass. you got. So you've got that in common with Lonzo, but you're not going to pass like him. Why wouldn't I? Because I don't a, have the chemistry? No, because he's a brilliant passer. He's very underrated in a lot of different I'm parts not of- saying he's not, but, I mean, I can pass. I can get okay. the ball to the open guy. Okay. So uh, just as long as I don't have to dribble between my legs, I'm good. Uh, you might need to do that in the NBA. <laughs> I don't think you need to do that in the NBA. I can dribble behind the back. I just can't, you know, and I can go between the legs, but it's just not always pretty. So, um, man, we've got eight games tonight. Mm-hmm. And uh, this week is uh, looking at the schedule here. Um, last week before the All-Star break, last full week before the All-Star break, Um We'll have a pod the re- every day the rest of this week. Uh, tomorrow's might be a little bit later than normal. Uh, maybe like a couple minutes, but not long. But um, rest of this week, we should be should be good to go on pods. Uh, and then next week, there will be a pod Monday and Tuesday. There will not be a podcast on Wednesday, the 11-game slate. I will be driving to Colorado. So you get, uh, see, including today, one, two, three, four, five, six more podcasts before the All-Star break. And then you ain't going to hear from me for a week. Okay. So, well, you might, but much, much needed uh, family time coming up. Good, good. So um, that's kind of the situation there. Um, Let's go over real quick some of these guys that could be traded. Yeah. Okay. Um, the big ones that I that that everybody needs to be, um, you know, aware of is Mike Conley and Mark Gasol. Um, Rajon Rondo, obviously, with the Lakers. Uh, Dennis Smith is obviously fine. Um, 
Reggie Jackson has been brought up in trade talks. I don't know if anything's going to happen because I don't think anybody really wants to take that contract. Mm -hmm. But he has been mentioned. Um, Be on the lookout for a guy like uh, Alex Burks or Jordan Clarkson, somebody who can shoot that the Cavs can unload uh, Mm -hmm. to a contender. Um, Let's see here. That's uh, that's basically point guards. Um, Shooting guards, you've got uh, pretty much um, Tyson Ross is uh, very, 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 what's the word, interested. A lot of people are interested in him. Um, In who? Tyson Ross. Tyson Ross. Or, sorry, Terrence Ross. Tyson Ross is a baseball pitcher. Who the hell is that? (laughs) Okay. Sorry. Terrence Ross is a baseball pitcher. I, I've done that, I think, 15 times this week. Um, so be on the lookout for him. Uh, obviously, Jalen Brown and the Celtics guys really aren't uh, going anywhere. Um, I would say possibly like a – I don't – I mean, maybe a Avery Bradley – um, I'm kind of stretching there. The, shooting guard, there's not really a lot. It's really it's Jordan Clarkson, Alex Burks, Terrence Ross, um, and that's pretty much about it. Maybe a Jimmy Butler, but uh, I, I don't think that that's really going to happen. I think they've kind of made their bed, so they're going to roll with it yeah. this week or this yeah. year. I so uh, at the shooting guard, um, mm. be on the lookout for somebody like, um, obviously, Brandon Ingram. Uh, Nicholas Batum, Jonathan Isaac uh, is going to be safe. If they're going to unload anybody in uh, Orlando, it's going to be a guy like Wes Alundo or Terrence Ross or DJ Augustine. Um, obviously, Lance Stevenson. Evan Turner, I've heard some names about. Uh, Mara Hazonia as well. Um, and then, obviously, Rodney Hood just got traded to the uh, Blazers. That's what yep. I think could make Evan Turner kind of expendable in that contract. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you can you need to be able to look out there. Um, Aaron Gordon, I've heard a couple rumblings about. I uh, don't know if anybody's going to want to take that contract either. No chance. But I, I have heard rumblings. Uh, Marvin Williams is a guy that uh, his name has popped up. Um Noah Vonley, uh, Taj Gibson, possibly, um, and maybe or and or Kelly Olinick. And then at the center position, uh, obviously, Vooch is a guy that they're talking about, you know, possibly unloading. Sure. Uh, let's see here. Mark Gasol, we've already gone over. Um, Hassan Whiteside's been in trade talks for seems like his whole entire career. Uh, JaVale, no one's going to take him. No, I know nobody's going to take him. But if somebody gives him a the chance to unload that salary, um, I wouldn't put it past, past Pat Riley to sure, sure. Know, get him out yeah, of there. Yeah, yeah. So sure. Um, Cody Zeller, I've heard. Uh, I think one of the reasons he's coming back is to kind of prove that he's viable um, and healthy and. Uh, the Hornets could end up unloading some of their um, expiring contracts for some picks, possibly. Uh, I don't think the Hornets are going to be that smart, but it, the talk is out there. So, yeah, um, you know, it's just uh, it, it, some of these guys are more serious than others, obviously. Um, Mark Gasol, Mike Conley, that, that's more serious. All the Lakers guys, that's, that's more serious. Um, but... It's it's one of those things that we do have to pay attention to and we do have to be aware of. Yeah. So um, anything else you want to add? Anybody I missed maybe? No. Um, I mean, uh, in terms of, you know, any kind of value, no. Uh, you know, not, not at the moment. All righty. Let's, uh, let's start at point guard, shall we? Yeah. Uh, Russell Westbrook, we just went over this, what, four days ago Mm -hmm. uh, against Orlando. Um, He's 12K on uh, on FanDuel. He is a whopping 11-4 on DK. And I say whopping sarcastically. Uh, Yeah. 
that's a great way to start your lineup, don't you think? I would think so. Um, <laughs> at the same time, I mean, it, it's almost like nowadays you got to stack Russ and George and move on. <laughs> I yeah. Mean, I mean, and like, it's not like there's not ancillary pieces for Thunder that you could throw in there. Terrence Ferguson's mm-hmm. been shooting the ball really well uh, lately. You know, you've got Dennis Schroeder who can get hot from the field. You've got, obviously, Je- Steven Adams. Yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy Grant's Grant. been playing really well. Yeah, so you've got those – basically, you've got those six guys, like the yeah. whole starting five and then Dennis Schroeder, um, yeah. which is why, you know, I really think they should go get Terrence Ross. Now, I don't think they should give up anything of value, but Patty Patterson and maybe um, somebody else for some picks – and a couple picks or something, um, you know, they You're can not, go. Nobody, nobody wants Patty Pat. I, I get that, but, you know, he would be the guy that you would buy out and then, you know, you've got your picks. So we're basically selling it to make the salaries work. That's that's the whole reasoning behind that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's a he's obviously the top point guard of the day. Um, I'm on the fence. Uh oh. I'm on the fence. Why? Um. Uh, well, I mean, if you look at just purely, uh, you know, highest score and highest ceiling, I mean, obviously, right? But if you look at it from a from a sense of um, dollar for dollar, I mean, he's 12k. So, you know. Obviously, he's gonna. He's got the. He's got the ceiling. But there's some other guys here, just in terms of you know points per dollar, that I think I like a little bit more. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, you can make a case for. Um, I, I'm still on. The, I'm on the fence about Ben Simmons because the last game. I'm gonna have to go back and look and see exactly the situation be, uh, between the Raptors and. Uh, the Sixers, the last game, uh, a couple days before Christmas, because he went off that game. But historically, he struggled against the Raptors. Um, so maybe if – whoa. You okay there? Okay. Oh, okay. Is it your cleaning lady or your wife? I can't tell. Cleaning lady. Ah, gotcha. So um, the background's a little, a little darker than I could see. So um, – but no, it's it's one of those situations where no, oh, it's one of those situations where like I like the idea of having a Ben Simmons in my lineup because he can do so much, like yeah. he he can do so many different things. Um, but if he's going to see a lot of Kawhi Leonard, then. I'm going to really back off on that one. That's, that's my, my hang up with Ben. So I'm off Ben. Um, I, I don't think they're, it's either going to, it's not going to be Lowry, right? So it's either going to be Kawhi or Danny Green. And obviously Kawhi is the one we're scared of most, but I don't really target Danny Green either. So, um, but I was actually talking about Damian Lillard when I talking about who my points per dollar favorite is. Okay. Um, uh, here's the thing, like what we see a lot of is we see a lot of, of players that, you know, we're used to being in the eight high nine K range and all of a sudden they hit 10 K like Vucevic, like Paul George hit, you know, 11, eight, like some of these guys went from, you know, upper mid tier to elite tier pricing. And we're like, I am, I'm not going to pay that. Well, the few times we didn't pay that, we, we, we paid the price. Um, Damian Lillard has abused the Miami Heat. And there's a couple of things we got to talk about. First of all, the main difference here is that um, they now have Justice Winslow defending the point guard. Versus, uh, you know, Goran Dragic. Goran, Goran Dragic. Yeah. So, or Tyler Johnson or whoever. That's, that's one of the reasons why I'm kind of on the fence about it. 
Yeah, and so that's that's the thing that's really standing out to me. And and look, I, I mean, Winslow is not uh, a pushover, uh, but yeah, at the no. same time, like same time, Lillard isn't either. So I mean, it's it's. I think he might be a little bit priced out, but um, I, I definitely like to take a couple shots in tournaments. Now. I think I think he's an elite tournament option. Like, yeah, I and I always love playing Dame when he's at home. Um, there's a couple things that I'm worried about, you know, typically we haven't been targeting point guards against, uh, you know, Miami for honestly, really almost all season. Um, they're just, their defensive scheme that they have in is, is meant to slow down guards, whether that's the one or the two, it's just meant to slow down guards. And that's one of the biggest things that, um, you know, I've got, I've got, to kind of think about because that's going against, you know, Damian Lillard in the Moda Center. Like, it's just death taxes and Damian Lillard at home. And those are just things to kind of live by at times. Um, I mean, we saw it. We saw it last game that he just went out and absolutely just put on a show. And now he's had pretty much a week off. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean... Yeah. They haven't been sitting around eating Girl Scout cookies for a week. I can promise no, you that. No, 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 they haven't. Speaking and of which, have you got yours? I got my what? Girl Scout cookies. No, dude. Oh. I don't have my Girl Scout cookies. What the dude, fuck? <laughs> you need to get, oh my gosh, you, you've got to get some. Yeah, I've had some. I, I just, uh, I'm going you to just, Miami this week. You haven't got yours this week or this I've, year? I've, I'm going to Miami this week, so I'm staying away from cookies and sugar and all that stuff for a little bit. Well, I mean, the wife's got to be happy that you guys are going down to South Beach. It's for her birthday, so yeah. Well, definitely... there you go. Happy birthday, Mrs. Bear. Thank you. So, uh, wifey and I are celebrating Valentine's Day on Saturday. So, nice. Because we're going to be in Vail Mountain on with a uh, with a kiddo during uh, Valentine's Day, so... Um, we're getting Valentine's Day done a little bit early. Um, Kyle Lowry, let's talk about this situation a little bit. He sat out. He was a late scratch on Saturday. He sat out. Well, he was a late scratch for DFS players on Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and some, I, I don't know who it was, but somebody had the nerve to call him doubtful today. <laughs> now, for those of you that don't know Kyle Lowry. Um, he's from Philly. He is, grew up a Sixers fan and absolutely loves playing against Philadelphia. Um, it, it's like a going home for him, obviously. Okay. And then to call him doubtful when he was just resting. Uh, he, mad. he mad. Uh yeah, he's mad. Now, the last time I said that Kyle Lowry was mad and pissed, uh, he came out and he, you know, only put up a 41. Okay. But he struggled the first half. He he really did struggle. Um I love Lowry tonight. Like, I think he's underpriced at eighty one hundred. He's my top cash game uh, um, point guard of the day. He's seven K on on DraftKings. Like, I, I just don't, I don't get it. Like, I, I realize he hasn't been putting up forty fives and fifties every game. You know, um, he just struggled mightily against Milwaukee in a game that really he didn't play a lot. I, he played 34 minutes, but it wasn't very active. I think this is a great bounce back spot for him tonight. Yeah, I'm a little bit on the fence. I so, so I I want to buy into what you're saying. I really do. I like the narrative. I love buy it there. Buy it. I love the fact that it's in Philly. I love that he's a Philly kid. I love how much he loves playing there, coming off of rest. I love all of it. Here's my issue. Well, it's kind of twofold. Issue A is our roster construction thing. And that is, I'm either going for Damian Lillard. I'm, I'm talking about tournaments, by the way. Oh, uh, no, not, yeah. Not cash games. 
I'm either paying up for Damian Lillard or like I'm paying down like a Darren Collison or Jared Bayless or freaking Brad Wanamaker. Like I'm not like that's that's kind of where or or obviously way up to Westbrook, which I'm probably not going to do. Um, and so for me, at the same time, also like there have been so the Raptors are healthy, right? They they have their whole team. Uh, minus Valanciunas, but you know, as far as like cornerstone players are concerned, no, yeah, I, I guess so. um, they're fully healthy and they move the ball. And there's so many of their guys that can score. And then you've got Van Vliet who comes in and he actually handles the ball. And then you've got Delon off the bench, and then you've got CJ Miles, then you've got. Uh, you know, Norman Powell, they just, they have... Hey, you want to add another thing to that? Okay. Jake Fisher, who is the beat writer for the uh, the 76ers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he just tweeted out, while Memphis has most seriously continued dialogue with Utah and Detroit on Mike Conley trade packages, mm -hmm. the Raptors called Memphis, offering Kyle Lowry and Jonas oh, Valachutis for Conley and Mark shit. Gasol. Per league sources, here's what makes it interesting. Lowry is aware of Toronto's general trade discussions. <laughs> oh, Toronto don't give a crap. No. Like, no. how are you going to do that? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, this is all about showing Kawhi that they'll do what it takes to put a winner on the court and to right, keep him. Right, but you guys are the number two team in the East with Kyle Lowry as your point guard. Are you telling me that Mike Conley is a huge upgrade over that? I got to be honest, man. I think Lowry is mediocre. I, I Yeah, but a huge upgrade. Conley is legit underrated. No, like I, you're, I, he's so, not underrated by me and you, though. But you gotta, you're you're talking like okay, so when you're talking about both aspects of this trade package, okay, so Conley to, or Lowry to Conley is a an upgrade. I'm not denying that. Maybe even borderline big upgrade. Not a huge, but big. You can win with either one of these guys as your one. Where I question it is Valanciunas versus Gasol. Is that a big enough gap? To basically show Kawhi and sell Kawhi on, you know, we're trying to get more people around you. And then you're talking about the locker room chemistry. Which I think is vastly underrated when we talk about trade packages in the NBA. It's not yeah. like MLB where you can just, you know, plug I get, a guy I, in. I understand locker room, but you're not, a, but what I'm telling you is that. Mike Conley is that dude in the locker room. Like he's not, he's not anything less than Lowry is in the locker room. So you're saying the sell of Conley being a one B to a wise one a could be enough to maybe put Toronto in a conversation to at least get a chance to keep Kawhi. Where's the one week spot defensively that the Raptors have right now. I mean, it, it's, it's point guard. It's point guard. Because Lowry, I'm sorry, he does not play defense. Well, and he the tries. Only, he's just not good at it. He tries. He's a professional basketball player. Of course he tries. But he doesn't do well, very well. So is James Harden, but he doesn't try. And he technically tries. He gets steals. He gets blocks. He tries. He's just, And it's a little bit different because he does literally everything else for that team. Whereas Lowry doesn't have that excuse. He's just not good at it. That's just the bottom line. And at the same time, his shots aren't even falling. So really, in my opinion, if I'm the Raptors and I can get Conley, absolutely I give up Lowry in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Now, that contract might be a little bit tough to swallow, but it doesn't seem like they care, uh, Toronto. So, I mean, I'm, I'm with it. I think it's a great move. Oh, man. That just adds more to this. So evidently now Kyle Lauer is on the trading block. Yeah. So he's double mad. 
Um, let's talk about Terry Rogier because Terry Irving's out today again, and Rogier ain't cheap. Brother. No, they they know what they were doing. Um, seven K on Fanduel, sixty seven on DK. I still think he's okay. Um, I'm not gonna have a ton of them. In my lineups, he's kind of in that middle tier. I think if I'm around the 7K range, I'd rather go down to like a DSJ or a Darren Collison. Um, I'm worried about playing Rondo. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, because I didn't expect his name to be thrown up in the, the trade, but it was. So I'm, and the reason I didn't expect it is because he just left New Orleans. So, and he has a, the ability to basically nix any trade. So I'm a little worried about that. But I, I'm not going to fault you for playing Rogier. We know he's got 45-point upside. Um, it's just I, I don't – he's he's in that, that range. So, I mean, he just put up 46 DK points against Charlotte. Uh, this is about as good of a matchup as he's going to get. Let's be honest here. The, huh? uh, let's be honest here. Point guards versus the Cavs have freaking destroyed. I, I mean, I, uh, I, yeah. Colin Sexton is, he might be the worst damn defensive guard in the league right now. And that's saying something considering Trey Young lot. has improved. Yes. yes. And he's still bad, but yes. Um, I mean, dude, like this is, uh, I do have a few concerns. The first concern is the obvious blowout factor. No, we don't we don't predict blowouts. I get that. Um, but they also the, the Celtics are are even more so when Kyrie is not on the court. They move the ball like crazy. Um, I'm just reading some of these uh, comments here, but I mean at the same time like. They could get up 25, and then it's the Jalen Brown show, right? And then they're also missing Marcus Morris. So, you know, they it'll be, it could be the Jason Tatum and Al Horford show. Um, for all I know, freaking Gordon Hayward might actually wake up, come up from the dead and play a big game. I mean, there's all kinds of what-ifs. Um, I mean, for me, I, just so everybody understands kind of what – what my tournament construction will look like today. It's Paul George and LeBron James and find value. Just so everybody understands that's what I'm doing. So when I talk about, okay, where do I find value? It's not because I only want to play value plays. <laughs> I got to win, right? But I do want to fit in those two and like a Lou Williams and like a Jalen Brown and those types of plays um, so I'm not paying 8,100 for Kyle Lowry in a bad matchup. I'm not paying, um, you know, 9,700 for Ben Simmons versus a team that's going to have elite defenders in his face the whole game. Like those are things that I'm going to be avoiding today. Okay. So let's talk about some of this value. Yeah. Um, one of the ones that pops out to me is a guy. Well, I mean. Okay, I'm just I'm gonna throw out two names: uh, Jared Bayless, Patrick Beverly. We've kind of ridden these guys for the last week and a half, two weeks. Sure have. Um, they're now priced up. They're still getting the minutes. Uh, they're priced not as much. up. They're, they're Beverly's not, pretty cheap. You have to think about it though. Like fifty five hundred and fifty nine hundred for guys that were down around four k. Sure. Uh, two weeks ago is now you're having to think about it. Um, yeah. So just let's just kind of look at at this for a minute. So you've got two guys in Beverly and Bayless that are playing like significantly over 30 minutes, not like 29. Yeah, like, they're playing it, 35 plus. Like Bayless has been playing damn near 40 minutes a game because they don't have a legit backup there with Rose and Teague and Tyus out. So it's been just him. Um, and like 
in a in a in a in a fairly good matchup. I think Patrick Beverly is going to get all the minutes he can possibly handle because Doc is going to make sure that he coincides his minutes with Kemba's minutes. Like his job is to guard Kemba, mm-hmm. and he and, and he's got elite steals upside mm-hmm. in this game. Um, Kemba, I wouldn't, I don't want to say turnover machine, but he's prone, right? Uh, I do like another guy from this game, which we'll talk about um, from the Charlotte side. So remind me to talk about Batum specifically later on, please. Um, but like for me, there's three middle tier guys that I really want: Darren Collison, Patrick Beverly, Jared Bayless. Those are my three, and Collison's a little bit, a little bit higher, sixty four hundred Fanduel pricing. But versus the Lakers, he's going to eat. So at home, he's going to eat. Yeah. Um, you know, we have got some injury news there with uh, Indy too that we'll look at here soon. But um, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't mind it. I guess. Um, I consider above 5K kind of a mid tier. 5K to 6,500 is a mid tier. Yeah. Um, yeah. Value guys aren't sexy tonight. Uh, you could throw in a Corey Joseph. Mm-hmm. Um, he's starting, by the way, so he's going to be again another another thirty minute player. Yeah, I prefer him off the bench, but he's still. A, I'm not saying he's not a good play starting. I just I prefer him off the bench, um, sure. running that second unit rather than you know. Um, Running around with the first units being a spot up shooter, yeah. uh, Shelvin Mack, I guess is is interesting. Uh, I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. You know, um, DJ Augustine. I don't hate it either. So those are some Here's of the guy guys. That I want to tell you that is a complete like large field punt play, and that's Tony Parker. And I say Tony Parker for a reason. I say Tony Parker because. What happened last game, I watched that Clippers-Charlotte game very well. Uh, Kemba was, I mean, smothered. Like, Beverly, like, we've seen Beverly lock people down, but, like, he was like, no, 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 I am going to kill you. And Kemba, he couldn't even get the ball in the half court. Like, it was ridiculous. So what did they do? Yeah, 60 minutes of hell. They brought in Paul. They brought Paul Daniels. They brought in. Uh, they brought in uh, Tony Parker, and Tony Parker had like uh, Jeremy Lamb on him because he was running the two guard, and he did pretty well. I mean, again, you're, I'm not expecting a forty, right? But um, I kind of like that. Yeah, you can call it a bear special, but it's not not a hundred percent. Please don't be crazy. He played, uh, it's 14, one of, he played just under 15 minutes last game, shot 57% from the field, 4-6 uh, from the line, had uh, four assists, uh, a couple rebounds, um, averaged over a fantasy point per minute. So I, know. Uh, I, don't, I don't mind it. Um, he's probably going to be a last resort type of option for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, for me, like if I'm looking, for example, for you FanDuel players – if you're looking for a drop score, um, you know, you've got Tony Parker, like Brad Wanamaker kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. So um, I would prefer Shelvin Mack, who I know is going to play over 20 minutes. But, um, yeah. you know, the same thing. All right, let's move on to uh, two guards, shall we? Uh, Jimmy Butler. Mm, not let's really. just let, let's just let's just start with the guy that everyone should be playing, and that's Lou Williams. Williams. Yeah, let's just go there. I mean, uh, he's out of his slump, um, and he's not even fully out of his slump. He's just like starting to come out of his slump, and he's still <laughs> and and he's still hitting his numbers. Oh uh, well, we can play Lakers tonight. Lakers pull yeah. out of Anthony Davis trade talks amid outrageous requests by Pelicans. Yeah, well, here's what I've been telling you from day one. It's all posturing. Stop looking at what's being said now and wait until the trade deadline because that's when we're going to know what's really happening. And, yes, it is outrageous. They want to be overwhelmed. 
it's funny. I was playing ball last night, right? And and right before we're about to start, I was, I was looking at my phone. I was looking at my scores, and um, I see the the Woj tweet saying, you know, uh, the Pelicans want to be what was the term he used? Uh, blown away or whatever, something like that. Um, by the Lakers offer and they don't feel like they're there yet and they want this, they want that. Bro, five of us at the same time, you can hear us, fuck you. Like all five of us at the same time. And we all were like, oh, you guys are talking about the same tweet? They're like, yep, same tweet. It was hilarious. So, I mean, it's just, again, posturing this one leaking to that one, right? Like LeBron and Clutch leaking to Brad Turner, and Pelicans and Dell Demps leaking to uh, Woj and Shams. Like I, I don't listen. It, this we're talking about a game of clickbait. That's that's what this all is. Click, yeah, it's, click, it's, click, click. Well, not only that, but it's poker between the two. That's like, what it is. These right. guys are putting out, you know, in the media, a way to kind of gain the leverage, and the Lakers are trying to gain the leverage back because they know that. They only have this type of card to play. Like yeah. that's that's all they've really got right now. So, anyways, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah, you should be playing Lou Williams. You should be playing him a lot. You should be playing him in cash. You should be playing him in tournaments, and you should be playing him all night long. All the Lou, yeah, all the Lou, all the Lou. Uh, let's go on to some of these other guys. Jordan Clarkson versus Boston. I'm out. I'm out too, man. And I, and I, and you know, all respect to the other coaches and whatnot. But when I see people say, "Oh, you must play Jordan Clarkson," fuck no. I don't want to play a guy that's going to be guarded by Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense to me to do that. Listen, he's going to put up 30 shots or whatever. Fine. So you're talking about he must hit his difficult shots to even sniff value. If you're going to play Celtics, play Larry Nance. Play somewhere where they yes. have an advantage. Cavaliers. Excuse me, Cavs. Excuse me. Who did I say? Celtics. Celtics. If you, oh, well, I, I, what I was trying to say was against the Celtics, right? If you're gonna yeah. play, either way, yeah. If you're gonna play Cavs, go Larry Nance. You know, go play some of the bigger bodies than that because uh, I mean, at this point, uh, like their defense on the perimeter has been so damn solid. Uh, I mean, over the last, so the, the the only exception, just to be very honest here, is when Kyrie plays. Because when Kyrie plays, you can attack point guard because he doesn't, he's not very good on that side of the ball. Uh, I know Celtics fans will, you know, start rioting, but it's the truth. Like, I'm looking at the numbers right in front of me. He's horrible. Yep. But, but the Lakers are still glad to engage. Sorry. <laughs> this is important. Uh, with the Pelicans and AD, but no longer want to bid against themselves. Lakers are waiting for Pelicans to make a counter proposal. Like I said, posture, back and forth yep. means nothing. So, uh, but where, but where, where you do want to attack them is down low, and certainly Al Horford is more than capable. So I don't necessarily know I like Zizic, but Larry Nance I like a lot, and I think Nance is going to play at least thirty minutes tonight. Uh, I know we're on shooting guards, but I'm just saying, like, if I'm going to play Cavs, it's not going to be the guards. And Terry Rozier is a significant upgrade defensively from Kyrie Irving. Obviously, he doesn't score or handle the ball, or shoot, or go to the rim, or do the stuff Kyrie does on that side of the court. But on defense, it's really night and day. Yep. Yeah, it, it is. So um, I'm I'm kind of with you there. Uh, I don't think that you can make a living picking on Marcus Smart, um, which is one of the reasons why, you know, we said kind of don't play Terrence Ferguson the other night. <clears throat> um, against, uh, you know, when the – Thunder and Celtics went off. So, um, yeah. and that includes like 30 something minutes and he put up 18. <laughs> so. Yeah. Guys, that includes Alec Burks. So, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm, there's, good. there's a lot better options for around the same price or cheaper. Who are they going to be starting now that they traded Hood and that SETI is out? It's probably going to be Jordan Clarkson and Colin Sexton and David Nwaba and uh, Larry Nance and Auntie Zizek. Okay, now Nwaba, I might, I may have some slight interest in. Well, yeah, but he's going to be going against. Uh, he he doesn't need to rely on the scoring, right? You know, um, as where Jordan Clarkson does, but he's also going to be seeing a lot of uh, Gordon Hayward. I'm fine with that. 
So, I mean, that's <laughs> that's the whole reason reasoning behind it. I, I, I mean, I love it. Yeah. Um, I'm good with that. I'm I'm not playing Jordan Clarkson in this matchup. I just can't do it. I'm with it. I'm with so, uh, now Marcus Smart, on the other hand, like okay, so Jordan Clarkson's 5400. Uh, we're just talking Fanduel here. Okay, Jordan Clarkson's 5400. Alex Burst is uh, 56. Okay. Well, at 56, I can go to Evan Fournier, who, yes, is going to see a lot of Paul George, but when they go bigger uh, with, you know, he could end up being at the two as well. Uh, or actually, he will be at the two. Sorry, to start the game. Um, who? Sorry. Uh, Evan Fournier. Yes. So. You've got him. You've got Marcus Smart's fifty three hundred. You've got it's Terrence very Ross difficult because between Fournier and, and Ross, you're kind of like play them both. Which, which one's going to go off? Not in the same lineup, but you can play them both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm I, saying like like let's say, okay. Let me let me rephrase it. You've got one lineup in a super high dollar entry, Terrence and Ross. you're in that ring. Yeah, I mean he's the guy that can. He's lit up OKC guys. Let's just just I mean. He just did I it want, two days ago. I know. Or three days ago. Like, I really want to play Terrence Ross. And obviously, you've got Jalen Brown right there. Elite pivot in GPPs is from chalky Jalen Brown to Terrence Ross. Yep. Not saying don't play Jalen. No. It's a great play. But if you don't Jaylen want Jalen has more upside. Uh, actually, I, I'm going to have to. I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think they're about the same upside, to be frank. Um, uh, um, but yeah, you, you just play Terrence Ross. So, Lou Williams, Terrence Ross is, was my first two shooting guards that I plugged in today. Um, I think Justin Holiday's fine for cash games. 4,500, going to play 30 plus minutes uh, with um, some of the guys out for the Grizzlies. He's been actually putting up more shots, which has been pretty nice. And they've been falling. Absolutely. Let me ask so, you this. What am I missing here? Why is Dion Waiters projected to play damn near 30 minutes? Because he just played 28 a few days ago. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's funny because the way it works. So I'm, what I'm saying here is I'm, I want to caution everyone. He just played 26 against Oklahoma City. Uh and then on the back end of a back to back, play twenty eight the next day. Yeah, I want to so caution that you. might be a little bit have a lot. That not a little bit. That it has does. a lot to do with it. That is that is it, right? But the reason what I'm cautioning folks about is, um, Eric Spolster. Uh-huh. You just you just don't know day one to day two what the hell he's going to do. Uh, only exception to that is he's been playing a lot of Kelly Olynyk lately, and he said he would, and he did. And I told you guys to play Kelly Olynyk on when he was minimum price, and nobody knew how to play him. And I'm like, guys, play Kelly O. He's back in the rotation. Nobody will know. And boom, now he's all of a sudden got hyped up a thousand dollars. Um, I don't know if I can say the same for for Deion Waiters. Uh, we'll talk about Kelly, Kelly Olynyk here in a little bit. Yeah, I'm talking about Kelly o, or uh, Waiters, though. I'm just saying, like, I don't know if Waiters is in the same category of, okay, now he's going to play his 28 minutes a game. I don't know that he will. Oh, man. Um, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with these New York shooting guards yet. Um, I don't mind on FanDuel playing some Dion Waiters, I guess, because of the drop. You can he can combat that. Um I'm sticking around the mid outside of Lou Williams, I'm sticking around this mid tier range. Yeah. I mean there's some there's some decent plays, I guess, um, in the lower end, but nothing I really wanna like take a gamble and talk about. Um the way the slate's kinda currently constructed. So all right, let's talk about small forwards here. Kawhi, LeBron, Paul George. I mean, there's nothing really uh, to talk about. <laughs> there really isn't. I mean, I'm playing LeBron and Paul. There's, there's no 
I'm sorry, but there are some good plays outside of those two, yes. But that's where I want to go today. Um, I don't mind if you want to go Paul and Kawhi or LeBron and Kawhi too. Um, I think you can if you just mix and match each one of those three. I think that's a good start uh, on a lot of a lot of your teams. Um, they can all go for fifty five sixty. So yeah. I, I think that there's there's a lot of credence there too. Uh, and then you've got guys like Nicholas Batum, who's really started yes. to increase his productivity against probably the best spot defensively of the night. I mean, you know, there, there are a lot. You, I, I like Justice Winslow. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, I like Brandon Ingram. I like DJ Reddick coming off rest. Okay. Uh, so the last Tobias, Tobias Harris versus Charlotte. I mean, there's a lot to like here. Okay, so the last four games that Nick Batum actually put up more than nine shots, he shot over 47% from the field. Yeah. Uh, we've got a 67. We've got a 47, which was as low against Milwaukee. And then we've got a 55 and a 60%. And he's actually started to hit his three again. So, and with that, he's doing more of it. So, it's uh, <sighs> the only problem with is on Fanduel playing one of the or playing him means you're fading one of the two big guys. And and that's exactly been my issue. It's exactly that. I mean, you know, it's it's at a point where, um, like you're gonna have to make some tough decisions. You know and. Uh, I think there is enough value. We already talked about point guards and shooting guards. We're going to talk about some other value plays in the other positions here where you can do that. So, mm-hmm. um, If you want to get uh, creative and make this one of your drops, then I don't mind some Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Uh, he's been playing around 25 minutes or so, and yeah. he's been very, very quietly – He's got 30-point upside every once in a while. Um, I think this is one of those matchups where he could do it. But he's not going to – like, he's either going to be your drop more than more than likely. Yeah. Or he's going to give you 30. Yeah. Uh, and he's not going to be highly owned either. So um, he's definitely, definitely an option. Yeah. Uh, Outside of that, I mean, Jonathan Isaac for me on FanDuel is a little bit overpriced um, for this matchup. If this was somebody else, then I might have a little bit more interest. He's 5,300 on DK, so maybe some interest is there. But then I can just play Evan Fournier or Terrence Ross, who are cheaper. Um, I know Jonathan Simmons is out, but. Uh, his price is his price is up there, so yeah, I, I've got a little bit of uh, I'm not quite as enamored with it anymore. So let's talk about power forwards here. Uh, my top play of the night is one Montrose Harrell. I mean, he's obviously in play. Um, I think I want to pay a little down. There, it, there are th- no like under six k down. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't mind it. Um, there's, there's three under six k guys that I'm four six k guys that I'm doing everything I can to calm down on because I keep plugging them in, and I'll give you the list. It's Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon is sixty six hundred. Yeah, that's under seven k, didn't it? You said six k. Oh, in the 6K range. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Aaron Gordon. Chalk. Lane Nance Jr. Mm. And Jason Tatum. Those are the three guys that I like. I like, I, I can get behind the Jason Tatum. I can get behind the Larry Nance Jr. Um, I could even see Aaron Gordon in cash games. Um, I can't do Aaron Gordon in tournaments because I, from 6,600, I want 45 to 50 point upside. 
Dude, are you insane? Do you, have you seen what he's done versus Oklahoma City? Dude, it's a completely different thing. He was at home and he didn't even break 40 against Oklahoma City the last game. Okay, so let me rephrase this. The non-homers, go ahead and play Aaron Gordon tonight Dude, because he's guy, got 60 point upside tonight. The guy hasn't broke 40 but once since the middle of January. Once. Okay. So I look at it like I look at defensive matchups. I His look at just went up Oklahoma from- City as like the worst defensive team in the last three games of teams that are playing tonight. Right above the other Lakers. They're different defensively at home. We all know this. We both know this. And the last game, Steven Adams didn't play. You're talking about a 2% differential, two-point differential between home and away. It's not like they're, war- they're giving up 150 versus 120. They're giving up 110 away and 108 at home. It's a two-point difference, okay, over the last three games. So it's not – so for me, I want a guy that's explosive – I want a guy that can shoot the three. I want a guy that can go look into the at, paint. And I want a guy, guy whose assists have it. Listen, I, you don't like to play. You don't have to like to play. That's fine. No, no, I'm, no. But I'm okay but with see, that. I think, but I if think, you're not playing Aaron Gordon and if you're telling folks not to play Aaron Gordon, it's doing them a disservice. I because don't the Thunder think it is are not a very good defensive team right now. Okay, he's so. 6,600. If he's put, so I looked it up. I'm going to bring it back up here in a second. Look at the Look at the three – Teams that they've played the last three home games they've had: Portland, New Orleans, Milwaukee. Okay, I'm not talking about those teams because Milwaukee plays good defense. I'm talking about a guy that literally last year and those different teams. I get it. Put up a 78 against these guys. A guy who just put up a 40 against these guys. A guy who prior to that put up a 42.9 versus these guys at 6600. His floor is 40 this year. That's exactly what you want. And now they get no we're John Gibson. We're going to agree to disagree on this one. I think he's fine for cash games. I just want more in tournaments. And I don't think he's going to get there. I don't think he has the ability to get there. Not when I can go play Larry Nance for 300 less and match him for cheaper or can, for lower you ownership. Play, you should be playing both. Not when I can go get Jason Tatum, not when I can go get Demonis Sabonis or Thad Young or Marvin Williams or Kyle Kuzma or Jeremy Grant. Like this is this is why I'm talking about like and this is I'm just strictly talking Fanduel, okay? Because on at 6200 on DraftKings, I I love it, but with the where but where he's priced on Fanduel. I can go get the rest of like, I can go get the rest of these guys. So you're telling me Nance has the same ceiling as Aaron Gordon does? He's three hundred dollars cheaper. That's not what I said. I asked if they have the same ceiling. Okay, so do I think that Larry Nance can get to forty five? That's yes. not what I asked you. Answer the question that I asked you. Do they have the same ceiling? No, Larry Nance does not have seventy five point upside. That's not what I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I think Larry Nance has a good chance to outscore Aaron Gordon in tournaments. Okay, but that's not what we're playing for. We're we're playing for who has the most upside. That's the, the, the higher ceiling. That's how right. I play but you're talking about a guy in Aaron Gordon that's turning out to be chalk. Um, I don't know. It's possible. So if Maybe. I can pivot, save some money. Get higher upside or get more points. So okay, so let me let me ask you this: Aaron Gordon or Jason Tatum? Aaron Gordon. You only get one. Aaron Gordon. Okay, Aaron Gordon or Demonis Sabonis. Obviously, it depends on Miles Turner. Got to see. There you go. But anyways, like I legit think that Aaron Gordon is not going to break forty-five. So for me, that's I'm my, pretty happy with 45. I, I'm not saying you wouldn't be, but if he turns out to end up being chalky on Fanduel, now I know he's going to be chalk on DraftKings, but getting a getting a 45 at 6200 is a lot. 
better than getting a 45 at 66. I'm not saying it's not bad. I'm not saying it's not a good play. What I'm saying is, is I think there are better plays on the board for cheaper on a points per dollar where you can maximize your ceilings elsewhere. But the, but the question here is not, are you playing Tatum or are you playing Gordon? The question here is, are you playing Gordon? And yes, I'm playing Gordon. I've, I'm going to set my roster up to where I can get two of the 6K range power forwards. And one of them is going to be Gordon. And I'm going to decide on the second one being, do I want Leonard Nance? Do I want Kelly Olenek? Do I want Jason Tatum? Who do I want? I'm going to decide that. And I'll, and I'll have, the, I'll have the, the salary for any of the guys that I want because I'm already pretty honed in on my value place. So um, it's not a matter of Gordon or those guys. It's Gordon and one of those guys. You know what? I don't really care what happens with Aaron Gordon as long as the Rockies lock up Nolan Arenado. Sorry, that just came across my Twitter feed. I had to break the break the tension a little bit. So um, we'll agree to disagree there. Um, like I said, I want to make this caveat. I don't think Aaron Gordon is a bad play. That's not what I'm I'm trying to harp on for anything. Okay. What I am saying is, I think, in my opinion. I can get the same, if not more, for cheaper. Okay, and Bear disagrees. I'm. I just. W- I don't want somebody to come at me at eight o'clock tonight when Aaron Gordon's sitting there at forty three, going, "I didn't play him because you said he was a bad play." Because that's not what I'm doing. That's not what I'm doing. I'm saying I think I can get the same, if not more, for cheaper, and that's a risk I'm willing to take in tournaments, especially yeah. if he's going to be chopped. Now, if he's low owned, if he turns out to be like sub 15%, this conversation is just, it's a moot point, you know, but if he gets up to that 25 to 30 range, like I think he's going to, then that's where this conversation comes into effect. So um, with the Lakers pulling out of this AD talk, quote unquote, I'm doing my air quotes. I know you can't see that, but pulling out um any interest in Kyle Kuzma um I need to look and see how his health is but okay. if he's if he's healthy his back is good then yes okay um I think he's a little underpriced for his what he's his ability is um so yeah I've got I've got some interest here uh Okay, so I've heard this name thrown around a couple times. Kelly Olenek? Mm-hmm. You have interest? Mm-hmm. You want to explain to people why? Because... Mm-hmm. Well, the main, the main reason being is he's still really cheap. He's 4500 And cleaning ladies dropped stuff left and right today. Um, and he's now... I mean, I don't want to even just say back in the rotation. He's like, he's playing 30 minutes. <laughs> um, you know, the thing that I'm a little hesitant about is he's 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 going. He doesn't play the the small ball five. He's the small ball four, right? Or just the four period. But uh, and that probably means a lot of amino. And I'm not like at 4500. I'll play yes versus amino because of the. Because all I really need is like a 30 and change, and I'm happy. Um, but I'm a little bit concerned that they stop him. <laughs> He's broke 30 once. Uh, it was the end of October, last uh, three seasons. He's broke 30 once, the end of October, um, against the Blazers and – that was in 29 minutes, um, and I bet you, because I think I remember Minu missing some time. Yeah. I'll bet you, shiny nickel, that uh, the Minu did not play that game. He did play. He played 20 minutes. He got hurt that game. Yeah, must have. 
So uh, I could probably go back and look at game flow and um, back up my validation on this. But I, I think that I would much rather kind of play... I can't believe I want to say this. Uh, Daniel Tice. I don't know why you wouldn't say he's a great player. I, I, I get that, but it's very, very hard for me to play Tice because of the fact. I, and I know that with Aaron Baines out, he's a lot better. But um, And Marcus Morris. And Marcus Morris. Um, and they get Cleveland. <laughs> but it's, it's one of those things that. I feel like you almost need this game to get out of hand in order for it to work. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not one to like predicting blowouts. So sure. Um, that's, that's my, that's my, uh, hesitation with, with Tice. Now on Fandle, it's not really a hesitation because of the fact that, you know, he's, he's a drop. So let's see here. Aminu went out the middle of the third quarter, and Kelly Olynyk uh, dropped twelve point seven fantasy points in fourth quarter. Um, and I'm big on playing at least one hammer player, and yeah. I, I do like that aspect of the play as well. Uh, Olynyk, the first because Olynyk started that game. Olynyk had. Uh, just over 10 fantasy points at halftime. He came out. Um, it looks like... Okay, so Aminu left the game in the five-minute mark. Um, and... He went off the beginning of the third quarter. Uh, assist... Rebound, rebound, and then hit two threes, and then made two free throws uh, after Aminu left. So um, he was still doing okay against Aminu, but when Aminu went out, when he came in for his last final rotation in the fourth quarter, he went off. So um, not as much of a validation as I was hoping for, but still a little bit. Uh, all right, let's talk about centers here before we get out. We've got about uh, five, seven minutes before we got to get out of here. Um, Joel Embiid, mm -hmm. he's very, very interesting to me because he he's bigger than Abaka. He's almost as long as Siakam. He's got the ability to kind of go berserk. Yeah. But he's expensive and hasn't really done a lot against the Raptors. Yeah. Plus, it looks like the Sixers are back to 100% too. And I definitely like him being more without Butler. Um, but either way, he can still go crazy. But. At 11-6, there are other spots I want to pay up for. Yeah, I think he's a tournament play. You know, playing 11-6 for him on FanDuel means you're not getting one of the big boys at the at the three. So, right. uh, Not saying he's not in play. I definitely would play him over Cat, but, uh, unless Mark Gasol's out. Then you can play Cat. So, um, Booch, you're paying 10K against Steven uh, Adams? I've got him in a couple lineups. Ooh. I think that 10k price tag is just a little bit out of my reach it's a little bit high but at the same time like i've been watching uh what centers have done in the last five games yeah i mean steven adams isn't healthy that's why he's even in the conversation that's why i'm playing him yeah. so i want to take advantage and you know um he's clearly banged up and he's not going to yeah. let anyone, anyone know that he is and that's fine uh, you know it's good for him and the thunder well it's not really good for the thunder but but um you know, uh, let people continue to think that he's the same 100% healthy Steven Adams and not to play Vooch. And, you know, we'll get Vooch at like 5%. I love it. Yeah, I think I think he's going to be 5% tonight. Um, Andre Drummond against DeAndre Jordan. I'm going to have to go back and look at the matchups here. Um, off the top of my head, I don't like it. I'm not scared of it, but... Not even close. But... Um, Jordan doesn't scare me at all. 
the only thing that scares me is playing Jordan. Besides no, it's <laughs> it's it's not that. It's more the fact that like I think Blake has the better matchup because at least Drummond and, or at least Jordan can body up Drummond. Um, and I don't see anybody on the Knicks being able to do that to Blake. Yeah. So that's that's kind of my reasoning behind that. Plus, at ninety three hundred, if I'm going to play pay for Drummond, I'm just going to go play Yusuf Nurkic against Son Whiteside in my, the Heat. Um, I, I'm going to be a hundred percent honest. I'm not paying up for a lot of centers today, for a vast majority of my lineups. I'm looking at that mid to lower tier um and really it's gonna be like what's what's gonna happen with miles turner that's gonna reshape the whole slate and the whole position for me because if miles turner is out then i like thad young and i know he's not a center on fandle but then you could kind of sit in there and you can think about kelly Olin or not kelly olenic um aliquin um, I do like have a little bit of interest in Mark Gasol. Um, Al Horford has been a man on a mission, and he gets the Cavs. Like I saw on Whiteside, out even in 19 minutes the last game that he, they played in October, he played 19 minutes. He put up 30 fantasy points. Like he kills Nurk. I don't know why, but he does. He does. Um, you would think that this is more of a positive matchup for Nurk. Um, and I honestly, I'd have to probably go back and look and see how many of these were blocks. But well, but, uh, but that's what he does, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm. It's, I was saying that more of like the killing Nurk might be a little bit of a stretch. It might just be a lot of blocks and rebounds, and not really a lot of points scored. Was my thought behind that? Yeah. Um. Outside of that, I mean, Cody Zeller is going to be back tonight, so. You know, Bismack Biombo is probably gone. It's it's this mid tier range for me uh, until we know about Miles Turner. So, yay nay. We we need to know. There's there's too much unknown for for yeah. that to be in the conversation. But um... <laughs> okay, so I just looked up Hassan Whiteside. Mm-hmm. His blocks. Okay. Yeah. Last three seasons, he's put up a sixty-two, a forty, and a forty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I showed it to you in the chat. Remember? Yeah, but I didn't know the specifics on the, how many blocks. Five, three, and six. Wow. He's averaging 13, 14 and a half rebounds. Um, he put up forty points in. It looks like thirty-four minutes on. The 27th and only scored five points. They're all re- it was all rebounds and blocks, rebounds and blocks. Yeah, and he's like he's like 25 minutes a game. So uh, this year, so it's listen, it's not for the faint of heart. Uh, it's not by any stretch of cash or core play. It's if I'm playing a tournament with 80,000 people and I need a play that no one's going to touch that has the ability to go 6, 7, X, I might play him in one. That's it. Mm-hmm. Like, I yeah, like I've got 50 that. lineups right now on FanDuel. I've got him in, I think, three. Yeah. So he's he's definitely not a not a core play. He's he's I hate the word dart throw. Um, he's a low exposure play. At, at, at best. Yeah. I mean. Okay, so let's talk about some of the centers here that, that I've been looking at. So um, I kind of want to stay away from the Memphis-Minnesota bigs. Um, I mean, you know, certainly I can play Gasol over Cat because of their prices and because Gasol plays D and Cat doesn't. Um so I might have some interesting to Saul. Um, any interest in Nurkic? Yeah, I, I have more interest in Nurkic than I do in Drummond, just because I have a lot of interest in Blake. Yeah, well, I, yeah, certainly. I, I don't even hate stacking them to be honest. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting because I think Nurkic, I mean, uh, you know, what, he's going to play 30 minutes. Who knows how much Whiteside's going to play if he starts to get 22 minutes. Then who is the rest of that? It's going to be uh, on Adebayo, uh, who's a better defender than I think he's given credit for just because of his athleticism. But yeah, I think he uh, doesn't have nearly the size that he doesn't have the size. So I think that's that's my point is uh, Nurkic is going to have, let's say, eight to ten minutes of game time with Adebayo on him, a smaller, undersized five. Yeah. Um, and the perfect, a perfect pairing for this, guys. Is Damon Nurk? Yeah, I I love that pairing. Um, just like we talk about with Westbrook and Adams, um, and some of these other uh, point guard center combos that run the two man game. Nurk and Dame are really good at it. Yeah, it's not always a thing of beauty. Um, because there's some of these these combinations that just run it, and it just looks oh, it's it's amazing, but. It's not. It's not the worst in the league by by far, and they run it a lot. Mm-hmm. They really do. Mm-hmm. So, so I've got interest there. Um, I mean, I do have a little bit of interest in DeAndre Jordan, just because. And I say little. I mean, it's really little because, um, like, I was on the fence about playing him on Saturday. Uh, you know, his day de- or Sunday, his debut for the Knicks. Uh, I think it was Super Bowl, um, so Sunday. And I'm like, look, he might not want to be there. He might hate the fact that he had to get traded. You know, when he's unhappy, we know that he's disinterested. He doesn't play, doesn't, you know, try. And all of a sudden, I turn on the game, and, you know, right before they're, you know, when they're taking off their warm-ups and they're giving it to the high fives and they're about to go on to the jump ball, He's like jumping up and down, screaming happy, beating on his chest, like big old smile on his face. I'm like, oh man, I wish I would have seen that before. Yeah, we um, had we didn't see that. We didn't see that at all in Dallas. So we didn't even see it the last year that he was in Los Angeles. He was miserable in LA. You can so, see it. Yeah, the last year and a half, he was he was pretty bad. Ever since they traded Blake. Yeah, yeah that's so, his boy. And so I was like, okay. I wish I would have known that. So, again, it was his first game, and he's still getting acclimated. I'm still a little bit concerned because Mitchell Robinson's back today and, you know, Fisdale. Um, so it's, and you've it's, got Kevin Knox, and you've got freaking Luke Cornett. And you've I'm okay got... with that. I'm okay with that because those guys do nothing that DJ does. Right. Like, I got it. Like They're just he's, young. and Right. He's he's the rebounder. He's the you know shot blocker. He's the you know get the alley oop plus with Dennis Smith Jr. He's that guy. And, and, I, and he's I'm, playing for a contract. And he's playing for a contract. So I mean I don't. That's why I don't hate it. Now, um, again, he's not a core play. He's not a cash play. But I would put him a little bit above in terms of like trust, above Whiteside. Well, maybe not a little bit. A lot more above Whiteside. <laughs> Um, uh, but definitely above either way. Um, so yeah. Um, Al Horford. Yeah, I don't mind it. Um, I like him better on DK. Yeah, obviously. But, uh, yeah, even, even Yahoo. Is I mean, he's 6,600 on DK. Like, yeah, just easy. Yeah. So, uh, some interesting news for Charlotte. Cody Zeller is back today after well, he broke his hand or something. Um, yeah. He's been out for quite a while, and he's playing. I don't think he's in play at 5200, first game back off of, off of breaking a hand. Um, probably see about 20-ish minutes. He's 4K on DK. You can play him there. Maybe. Maybe. I got to see. I don't know. I mean, I, we got to see. I don't know how he, how he looks, how he feels, if his arm it has all of his, its strength back or not. I don't know. I don't think they bring him back if he does. If he if he's like any sort of. No, I'm not saying still hurt or not healed. I'm just saying as far as like confidence, getting back into the groove of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Unless he's unless he's unless they come out and say yeah he's going to be on a hard cap at 15. Um, if they give me a you know 23 to 25 roundabout somewhere in there, I'll take a couple shots on DK at 4K. Sure. 
Now, so, but not on not on Fanduel. Absolutely not. Not at fifty two. On the right. Um, if we find out that Turner sits, I have significant interest in Kyle Quinn. Yes. Yes. Please. 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 Uh, please. 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 Yeah. I, I'm. I'm hoping that he does sit because. I really, really want to do that. Minimum price. Don't even have to consider him a drop score. I love it. Yeah, it's uh, running a what if scenario here. It's only eighteen. Um, seventeen minutes. Yeah, but he jumps up. But he's min price, so like, and he's a very, very high point per minute type of player. So oh, that he is. Um, that is. Yeah. I would definitely have a lot of interest. So. All right. Anything else before we get out? Nope. All righty. Guys, that's going to do it for us today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure that you check us out, dfsarmy.com. Put in the promo code podcast. It's P-O-D-C-A-S-T. Uh, get 20% off your first month. And, uh, Bear, let's have a great night, shall we? I plan on it. Awesome. For myself, for Bear, for the DFS Army. Peace out.